I bought this really fairly terrible little pocket radio for a couple bucks a few days ago. It works after a fashion. So, you know, what do you expect? The speakers you know, yay big. But what's interesting about this from my point of view is that it is a modern digital radio, obviously with the analog um, selector. But I'm just, I've never looked inside one of these. I own a few radios like this. I have an XH data. Um, something 115 I think it is model that uh, that's a shortwave radio that's based on uh, a digital signal processing chip of some sort but I kind of like it and so I haven't opened it up this I don't care it was five bucks and uh, yeah so let's see what's in here a couple of batteries I'll let those out Interestingly, to make space for the speaker, they've stepped the batteries one above the other. That's actually quite clever. I mean, it's, it's, it's actually a kind of nice looking radio. I mean, it's the other reason I bought it, right? But it looks kind of nice. And obviously, the dial is too short to be terribly useful. <laughs> and uh, it's very touchy to tune. And I mean, it does work okay once you get it tuned. Um, but uh, yeah, you know. There's some clever bits here. Do what seems to be my usual thing and put these in the battery cover. I'll try this side. I mean, I'm wondering, are they just like a blob with is there just like one blob that does the whole thing? Okay, so we'll remember the deeper screws go in. Is, it just, is there just a blob here? Is there a chip? Is there a chip and an amplifier? All right, let's see. There we go. It's a single chip with, oh, there is a number on there. Can I read that? Not without a magnifying glass. I will get one of those presently. Um, we have a T90 new to board date of 2015 10 5. Um, Let's see what we see on the other side. Are there screws holding this in? Doesn't appear to be. Well, the ferrite bar antenna is running up and down here. I can just make it out. I'm sure you, know, you can just sort of make it out there in the video, running up and down the side. Uh, that's got to be the speaker. I am sort of curious as to what is on the other side of this board. Oh no, sorry, that's not the ferrite bar. That's the that's the antenna that comes out here. The ferrite bar is up here. I do I am kind of curious as to Oh. And I'm staring at two screws right in my face. One thing I do find is that looking through the camera while I do this does work, but it does mean that I tend to miss fairly obvious things like those screws. So now we should be able to lift this right out. Okay, so you can see how the, if you look back in here, there's how the pointer, oops, there's how the the dial marker works. It's just on this little springy piece of plastic that 
runs around. So that is presumably a potentiometer in there that talks to the little chip. We have a quartz crystal and a capacitor there, an LED. This is all through hole stuff that's soldered on the other side. It's a single sided board, I believe. Yeah, single sided board. And that's it. One chip. Okay, let's see if I can get that, if that dial works. Yeah, still works. It's pretty clever. A little ferrite running along here. And here are a couple of zero ohm resistors, right, to bridge those traces because it's only a single sided board, I guess. Not that I know all that much about this stuff. And so that one chip, yeah, just a bunch of resistors and capacitors here. Yeah, that's it. It's one chip. Okay, so I'm going to go see if I can find something and read the number off of that. Maybe it's possible to do it here if I get it close enough. No, the iPhone won't focus that close. Can I? Oh, I can zoom in. Okay, that's what we're going to do. So AKC4926, and then 1416. Presumably that's, I don't know if that's 2014, 16 month, 16th month, or the other way around. Um, given the board date is 2015, I, it's probably 2016. Well, it could be either way. Depends on what you think. Yeah. Very interesting. And a little tiny speaker. There really isn't much to it at all. I mean, it is interesting that the FM radio in a Walkman, which I, I've also recorded a video for, and I don't know if I'll have up before I put this one up. But it's interesting that that also had, although I didn't look it up or anything, also had essentially a single chip radio solution as well, but it was an, an analog radio solution, right? So um, I don't think this is surprising at all, but there's really, there's nothing to it. Okay, I'm going to go look that chip up. So I found the data sheet for this chip. It's really quite fascinating. It supports FM bands, it supports AM from 520 to 1330 kilohertz. It looks like it supports both TV audio standards for old analog TV. It supports shortwave bands from 3.2 to 21.9 megahertz. It supports long wave. And it will take a supply voltage of anywhere from 2 volts to 3.6 volts, which is very convenient because it's really easy to drop a um, a, a lithium battery down to that, or it'll still run on, sorry for that noise, it will still run on these two AAs. So it's really a pretty interesting chip. It's got a 0.6 watt amplifier in it, which is presumably what is driving this, but that would then go to a second amplifier stage in a larger radio. If you look at the schematic, it looks really straightforward. If you added a band switch, you would have a multi-band radio, like a shortwave radio. And I'm really tempted to open up that X data thing to see what chip is inside it, because I think it's the same chip, and I think it's got the same connections in it, which really suggests that the vast majority of these little radios are using this or something simpler to it, and that that's what's providing the wealth of inexpensive small radios. It looks like there are companies out here 
that are, there's a, an ad here for some place called Skyworks that says our broad portfolio of high performance multiband radio receivers includes FM, AM, shortwave, long wave, blah, 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 sand receivers. SI48XX devices are the industry's first fully integrated 100% CMOS, FM, AM, shortwave, long wave, and wideband radio receiver ICs. Right? So we get the idea that You know, this is a different chip, but we get the idea that based on these sorts of things, we get a variety of different kinds of radios based on the chip that's involved. So I'm really quite fascinated by this. This looks like a highly simplified device designed to make pocket radios, which is what this is. This looks like this radio is a pretty standard design based on that and I think it's really fairly fascinating. You know, you, it seems to me that you could take this board and you might be able to do some interesting things with it. Although I've got to say soldering onto those pins that aren't used right there, which I think is what would be required to get the band switch working, would be a bit beyond me. We we'll also have to figure out how the uh, how to handle the antenna situation. Well, you could use this little FM antenna here. You might be able to pull in one of the preachers or something like that from the states here in Toronto. Um, I don't know, but it's really kind of fascinating. And I do think I've got the same thing on the shelf back there. So just a moment. And so here is the XH Data D328, which I bought because it was $12 Canadian. So we're including a battery. This is one of these things that uses these sorts of batteries. I actually quite like these. I think they're a pretty good choice for portable radios now that they're widely available. Well, let's see about getting this opened up so that we can look inside and compare. We'll just move these over there. Try to keep the two radios apart. And we'll just see there's one screw here. That one will be a bit shorter than the rest most likely. Or perhaps not. Try to keep it. Oh, just fits. This screwdriver can be a bit, doesn't necessarily make it down the small ones if they're deep enough. So really, I'm not going to take this part any farther than just trying to read the name of the, the number off the chip. Because, as I said, I really like this radio. It's really fun for poking around just to see if you can hear something that you haven't before. Um, I have better shortwave radios, but uh, this one rates fairly high on the good to screw around with before you go to bed just to see if there's anything out there. So I was correct, it's four longer screws and one shorter one. And this appears to not be clipped, so let's see what we got. Can we fold this back? Okay, so this is considerably more complex. Let's see what we can see here. Let's see if we can read any of these chip numbers. SI, okay, this has got to be the radio chip because this is one of the ones. SI 4825 A10. Uh, 2020, week 50, I'm guessing, from below that. So this one I've seen, this one was referenced in that earlier 
discussion where they were talking about radios based around this chip. So this chip is supposed to be, um, I mean, it's clearly supposed to be something better than, than, the, than the one I was talking about before. Um, what do we have here? So that's the radio chip. That I'm not finding. So I don't know what that is. Pacmel 902. The level of complexity here was just uh, going to be quite a bit above what you see in, in that. Yeah, well, that's pretty neat. So, um, I don't know what those are. I, I will, I will look those up. Okay, so once I get beyond blindly looking up chip numbers that I don't really understand, um, and looking at the board and what connects to what, it becomes more obvious. So that's the amplifier right here that I was able to look up. That's the radio chip, the SI whatever forty eight something or another, that seems common enough in these things. Um, what I forgot, of course, is that this has a, uh, an audio player, and that's what this is. So one of these is a microcontroller, so it has Atmel, it's a microcontroller, and then that's probably the, um, the audio playback chip for, for the card. That's my guess. I really don't know. But just judging by where all those tracks go, and there's the card slot right there. That's what that's got to be. So the radio part of it is really fairly straightforward. It's one chip and, a, uh, and an audio amplifier, which you need to drive a larger speaker. You're not going to drive that on something rated for 0.6 watts. So, yeah. And... Um, you can see over here the band switch. All very neat. I will say this is, I really quite, as I said, I really quite like this radio. I think it's a lot of fun, but uh, it really is fairly terrible on AM. But it's, the FM is fine and no stereo, and it's like, it's a shockingly good shortwave radio. It, uh, it just does <laughs> much better than it has any right to for $12. So I would say if you find one of these things on sale, that's well worth buying. This one, yeah, maybe it's worth $5, but it's pretty hard to argue when $12 gets you this and a battery, right? So, and it, there's got to be a charge controller in here somewhere as well because it's capable of charging the battery. That's, that's a thought. That's maybe what all this is about here. There's a USB, yeah. It might be that the um, the microcontroller is handling the charge, and I think these batteries have a uh, have a controller built in them as well. They have their protected battery, and in fact, you can kind of drop it. But you can kind of see where there's a little circuit board that's underneath this plastic top piece. So, uh, so I'm assuming that's 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 got a uh, the little. That's got a some sort of protection in it as well. So But if you do look over here, that that's a diode, so that's probably that's ground. Power, yeah, there's a protection diode, I think. Well, it's definitely a diode. <laughs> and um, some resistors to get it to charge. There's an LED there. Oh, that's, <laughs> this is kind of, maybe shines its way in. Uh, my memory is that that's a two-color LED, but it doesn't look like it. Yeah, maybe it just flashes um, until it's finished charging or shuts off. I can't remember. Um, 
the battery lasts ages in this thing, so I can't even remember when I last charged it. Yeah, yeah, and these are the buttons for the player. That's the switch. Each of those has a resistor on it, which makes me think that the bands are determined by the resistor value that this sees on one pin. Can we see where does that go? Each of those. Yeah, I'm not sure. This is almost certainly a two-sided board. Do we see any through holes? Yeah. So, maybe not. I know, I'm very tempted to take it out, but if I do, I will never get the pointer to work again, so I'm not going to. Yeah, and 100K pot, 260 degrees. So that's what it's using to, to measure the... Uh, figure out what what it's tuned to. As I said, I really like this little thing. I still don't know how you can sell it at a profit for $12. <laughs> so I want to look at one more cheap radio that uh, just to see what kind of chip is in it. And that's this Ratekas one that I bought for my daughter to take camping. This is kind of neat. It's got a flashlight on it that's pretty usable. And uh, yeah, this is pretty, pretty fun little radio for a kid. Now, what's interesting about this one, and where I'd like to compare it to this one here, is that it's got a, uh, a not terribly useful, but it's still present shortwave band. You can sometimes get a couple of daytime shortwave things on there, but it's. Uh, that's not good. Nothing like this uh, XH data, which is actually quite a good shortwave radio. Um, but this we know has a different chip in it than this one, this Born, whatever. But uh, but I'm curious, which chip does it have? Does it have the SI chip, or does it have the one that's in the Born? So let's have a look. Um, again, this is a this one I like, unlike the, the, the this thing, which I think is a hunk of junk. Um, this is a good radio, and I've given it to somebody else, so I have to be careful opening it up. Uh, the other neat thing about this is it comes with a not terribly high capacity, but still there, protected 18650 cell. Button top. I've got a bunch of these in high capacity format for uh, for flashlights, but uh, so you know it's easy for me to take up to go camping and take a, a whole boatload of those, and then it can run my light and it can run her radio and and her light if she wants to use it as that. So let's just have a look at the screws here. Um, it looks like three on the bottom. I'm hoping that my screwdriver will get all the way down that one. Am I seeing one up top there? I have to look around the camera a bit to look at that. And uh, so that looks like four screws. I'm kind of hoping it's not clipped because the likelihood of my getting it apart without damaging anything is better if it's not clipped. So let's have a look with this. Oh, that's going to work. Okay. So I think we're in business here. So I'm just curious as to what the chip is in here, and that's really the only goal of this exercise today, is to, is to see that. Because what I'm thinking of is I'm thinking of taking this radio here. Because if you look at the data sheet for that chip, 
it supports shortwave. So what I'm thinking about doing is tracing out the circuit that's already in this radio. It's got all the parts, right? I mean, okay, I obviously wouldn't be able to use the resistors and uh, capacitors that are surface mount that's on here, but it's taking the chip, so carefully soldering some leads onto it, and stuffing it onto a breadboard and seeing first if I can recreate this radio on the breadboard. And number two, can I go beyond that? Can I make a shortwave radio out of the chip that's in here um, on a breadboard? And I'm thinking that I ought to be able to. I don't see any particular reason why not. As I said, all the parts are here. The, the, the hard parts to find are the coil. And um, I mean, we'd have to take it out of another radio, I suppose, would be the coil and the quartz crystal, but the quartz crystal is on here and the, the coil is on here. Everything else is stuff I should have floating around. So that's the idea. And if this radio has this, if this Rotekis radio has the same chip in it, that will mean that can I recreate this radio with the chip out of that one? And given that I paid, you know, five or six dollars for this radio and it kind of trash anyway, I'm happy. Now, my guess with this one, if it has the same chip that, like the XH data, which it will also have an amplifier, a separate amplifier, because this thing has really quite good sound for a pocket radio, for what's essentially a pocket radio. Yeah. Did I have it? There we go. All right. One more here. As I said, I hope there aren't too many clips. So this one's a little different. It's a black screw with it. Head that. Uh, I feel like I'm missing something. I'm guessing we've got clips. Okay, I'm going to shut off this so I can have stereoscopic vision and see if I can get it unclipped. Okay, that turned out to be very easy. Just need to get it started with one of these little guitar pick tools. Okay, so here is our moment of truth. I haven't looked yet. We have... Let's see if we can do this. All right. So we've got three chips, and that might be a power regulator. There should be a charging control chip for the 18650 cell because it charges it. So that is an LED there. This is probably the charge control chip. Well, let's look up that number from that. I mean, we know this is, we know that's the tuner chip because it's got the um, rod antenna which is buried under here connected to it. Um, that probably shuts off the power to charging the battery. Again we can see the light, the LED for the charging light coming off it there. Um, yeah, I think that all makes a fair amount of sense. Um, Again, my guess is that that's an amplifier. What's that? So I stopped at the Salvation Army store this time, and I picked up another portable radio. This one has a great box. You've just got to love this kind of Chinese brand and stuff that was intended for the Chinese market, I think. Anyway, um, that's a bit better. So. And, and I don't know if this is going to show on video, but this is either yellow or you know, I think it's printed yellow. Um, I have this is the kind of thing I have no idea when that's from. Right? It could be from any time uh, from the early 2000s to the present. And I'm also very curious as to what chip is inside this radio. You can see the Salvation Army call charged me a full. $5 for that. But, you know, 
new inbox complete with headphones, which I will certainly never use. Um, and they are wrapped up in plastic. It's a little radio. So, sealed with extra sticky tape here, as these things often are. So, I mean, really, you got to kind of like that. It's got a tuning dial. I mean, it's got to be a digital radio in there, right? But if I have any luck, it will have the same chip as the one that I've been poking at in the other one. So it looks like that takes a couple of AA or triple AA batteries, I think. So we'll cut some in, see if it works, and then I'm going to take this back off, which is one, two, two screws, I think. All right. Definitely not AA batteries. The whole scale of this thing is so small that it just confuses you. So, especially when you're looking at it through the, uh, the camera screen or phone screen in this case. Let's find some triplets. Okay. There's some batteries. Let's put them in here and see if it works. Then we'll get to taking it apart. There we go. All right, let's. Oh, sorry, I had that out of screen. Okay, so we've got the batteries in it. I'm trying to listen for the quantized tuning. You know, the tick, 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 tick you get? I'm not hearing it there, but it doesn't necessarily show up as much in, well, let's get into AM. I don't know if you can hear any of that because the microphone's on, on me, but I am not hearing the chick, 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 chick of a digital tuner in this. And so, I mean, it's got to have a chip in it, right? It's just too small to be anything else. And I mean, too recent. So the question is, what's it got in it? It's fairly terrible AM radio, I think. The selectivity is kind of non-existent. FM, it actually seems to work pretty well. So, uh, so let's see what happens. I guess I should check and see if it's got stereo output, but I don't really care. It does have a power light though. That's, you know, that's high tech. All right. So I am going to, uh, get a screwdriver out and let's have a look at what's inside this thing. I should add, it has a lovely, I don't know if it's lovely, nasty plasticky smell. Not from the bag, it's from the radio itself. It's, uh, it's really, it really smells like it's been sitting around somewhere for a while in its box. And, you know, the thing about this, this whole package design is it could have been, like, it could be current, it could be, um, as I said, it could be 2000s. If it's analog, it could be late 90s I suppose it does have an it does have a uh, have an address I have to have an, an an IP address it is a dot cn not a dot com domain too which does suggest it might be a bit older so we'll have to see anyway I have some tools here the usual little tool set here and uh, let's see what we can do. It looks like two Phillips screws. And 
No, that's the wrong, wrong one. So I think what I'll do is open this up, have a look at what's in it, and then the likelihood is, is that I'll be looking at the chip number to try to figure out what it does. This antenna wire. So the, the, the way we'll know is whether this is a tuning condenser or a uh, or whether it's a um, potentiometer, right? So the digital radios use a potentiometer to as essentially the input to input the channel. This, on the other hand, is a very little variable capacitor, right? So it's a, it's a tuning condenser. There's also other neat stuff on here. Like, look at this. Is this a resistor, or is this just supposed to to couple the antenna onto the? I don't know. That's the same speaker. It looks like almost identical speaker as in the other little radio with the digital tuner that I've been poking around at. And, you know, that's standard. So, yeah, I mean, so I mean, this is an analog radio, but it doesn't have a whole lot more parts. I just want to see if it'd be easy to remove this from the board. And I think it's, what's that tape covering? Oh, that's, there's the, that's covering the very fine wire here that goes to the antenna. I mean, honestly, this board is better designed. To, at least it makes more sense to me on the outside than the other one. I'd love to see a date on something. Can we see anything on this chip? I can't read the number on it. There's goop all over it. I'll we'll have to have a look at that. Don't see any dates. Battery minus, battery plus. That's the speaker connection. All right. Well, I dare not tear into this too much more deeply because I will pull out the little dial thing, which I kind of like. But as you can see, look at that. There's a full analog radio with through hole parts on that little circuit board. That's very fun. As I said, I don't dare poke at it too much because I don't want to wreck that little dial knob. But uh, I'm now quite glad I spent my $5 for this. I think this is pretty fun. Look at that. So single chip analog radio. I still haven't been able to read the chip. I will try once more for that. So the chip number has been rubbed off rather deliberately or not. I can't, I mean, I can make out an M and I can make out some bits and pieces, but I don't think I'm going to get it. Anyway, it's very fun. Okay, now we're looking at the little junky pocket radio again. So it's a different chip. Um, in the Ritecus. So that means that there must be at least a number of those. So we've looked at three radios, all using phony analog type digital tuners, and they all have different chips in them.
So that's very interesting. So I think what I'm going to do is pull the board out of this one. And then I'm going to try to trace out the circuit here. I don't see much point in looking up too many of the other chips. I just thought it would be interesting if it happened to have the same one, but it doesn't. And that's really, really interesting. Now it could be that the one in here is a, uh, is a clone of something else. That, I mean, seems very likely given the quality of the English on the uh, data sheet for it. But uh, yeah, it's all very interesting. So I think I'm going to try to make, well, I'm going to try to remake this radio on a breadboard. I think that's going to be the first step. I don't know if that's going to work, but I'm going to try. So I'll try to remake this circuit on a breadboard and then the second part of the uh, of the exercise will be to see well can we add shortwave reception to it uh, I mean some part of me thinks that I could probably do that separately on a breadboard and keep this together but um, you see so what did the the this chip requires a a sort of resistor divider kind of setup for setting the for setting the uh, the band, um, and here of course there are only two, so we've got here's a sub series of resistors here that does that. So um, where's the band switch on this? It's on the front, so I can't really see it right now, but. Uh, it's there, so it's here somehow or another. Um, but I don't think I'll really understand it until I have a look at, at trying to uh, reverse engineer a strong, a strong <laughs> uh, uh, statement for what I'm trying to do, but just trace out this, this board and see if I can understand what's going on with it there. Compare this to the uh, example circuit that's provided with the data sheet for that chip and then see if I can modify the this sort of resistor network that, um, that determines what band it's on so that I can, using jumpers or something, set, set it to some of the shortwave bands. And then if that's the case, then there's, there's more potential playing one could do with it. Anyway, that's the goal. That's what I'll try to do. Um, I, th I think what I'll do is, I, this is going to take me probably a month to do. So what I'll do is I'll record as I go, and uh, I'll wait until I have a resolution to this whole thing before I, uh, before I post any videos about this. So if you see a video with this in it, I probably already know what's going to happen, but uh, uh, not as I'm recording it, of course. So just if it turns into a total wreck, then I don't have to post anything. I don't feel any obligation to continue it.